get the care that they so richly deserve, our veterans. We've eliminated restrictions on the production of American energy. They wanted to take away our wealth. The world wanted to take away our wealth. We happen to be lucky. Under our feet, we have great wealth, not only in the form of your kind of wealth, which is beautiful, fertile soil, but also in other locations in the form of energy. They wanted to take that power and that wealth away from us. And we've ended the war on clean, beautiful coal. And we're putting our miners back to work. In fact, you read about it. Last week, a brand new coal mine just opened in the state of Pennsylvania. First time in decades. Decades. We've reversed it. And 33,000 mining jobs have been added since my inauguration. And again, we're going to have all forms of energy. But coal is something we have a tremendous advantage of. But we're going to have all, whether it's natural gas, whether it's alternative sources, we're going to have everything. But a power is coal. It's a power for our electric different plants and for our furnaces. It's a power. We use electric, we use wind, we use solar, we use coal, we use natural gas. We will use nuclear if the right opportunity presents itself. We're going to be strong for the future. We're going to be strong for the future. I don't want to just hope the wind blows to light up your homes and your factory. as the birds fall to the ground. <laughs> but I like all of them, and that's what we need. And by the way, we're saving your ethanol industries in the state of Iowa, just like I promised I would do in my campaign. And believe me, they are under siege, folks. I don't know if you know it, but they are under siege. We've approved first day the Keystone XL Pipeline and the Dakota Access Pipeline. First day, day one. Thirty-eight thousand jobs. And better for the environment, by the way. Better. Underground. Better for the environment. And safer. Can you imagine the executive for Keystone, who a year and a half ago was told it's dead, and they have billions invested, they bought half of the pipe, and somebody walks into his office, probably a consultant that charged him tens of millions of dollars. Sir, the pipeline was just approved. Now, you know what he's going to do. He said, I did a great job, sir. I'm entitled to millions of dollars in consulting fees. It was just Trump approving the pipeline. We approved it. We approved it. It's good for the country. My man. And by the way, speaking of that, when I'm signing for the XL Pipeline and the Dakota, I said, by the way, who made the pipe? You don't want to know. USA. No, not the USA, believe me. I said, who made the pipe? Now, in all fairness to them, they bought a lot of their pipe already, so it's a little hard to say, throw that away, we're giving you, you know. But I put a little clause, handwritten. It said, anybody builds a pipeline in the United States will use American steel and fabricate in America. No more taking it over on boats. Very simple. We've signed 39 pieces of legislation. That means going through Congress, folks. Because, you know, they tell you, these guys, the fake news. They tell you it's fake news, fake. Not all of it. Some of it's good. And some of the people are great, actually. But some are real bad, and they're really fake. But 
If you listen to them, we didn't pass any. We passed 39. I'm not talking about executive orders, which we've signed a lot. I mean, we have really signed a lot. And we've gotten rid of a lot of really bad pieces that were signed by President Obama, believe me. But if you listen to the fake news, they say, like, he didn't pass any legislation. Everything's executive. It's wrong. 39 pieces as of today, some of them very important. Now, my biggest pieces are yet to come. Hopefully, taxes. Hopefully, health care. Hopefully, infrastructure. And when they come, that won't be good enough either. See so you watch. But we've also done a record number of resolutions to eliminate the job-killing regulations on our workers, our companies, and our farmers. They're gone. They're gone. We are ending the federal intrusion into your family farms and your ranches. And we're also working very, very hard to get rid of the death tax so that you can pass your farms onto your children and onto your grandchildren. I don't know if we're going to pull that one off, but we're working very hard to do it. Right, Chris? This way you can pass your motorcycle on, okay? Forget about the farm, right? That's not so bad either. I've seen what you, what you ride. Not so bad. But we're working on I don't know if that one's going to get pulled off, but it should. Because you should have a right. Why should you be double taxed? You should have a right to pass your farm onto your children and onto your grandchildren. You should have that right. Without having them Without having them going out and borrowing a fortune, not being able to make payments,